citizens and welcome to the Negro's Worst Enemy, a reply part 2. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that this video is not a propaganda or entertainment video. It is for educational, informational and reference purposes only. Please look for the referenced sources and study them yourself. Remember, after the defeat of Germany in the Great War, the Cameroons became like Togoland, a mandated territory. France being responsible for the major portion and the strip to the west about 31,000 out of 306,000 square miles being incorporated in Nigeria. W. E. Simnet, 1942 and it is from the book The British Colonial Empire published 1942. And from James McQueen, the real Negro race and who remain unconquered by the Mohammedan arms and unconverted to the Mohammedan faith were from six to eight centuries ago driven into this portion of Africa where the very high mountains and native forests which run east and west in the parallel of 90 degrees to 10 degrees north latitude have hitherto sheltered them from the incessant attacks of the fanatic Moor and the more fanatic Negro Mohammedan. And this is from the book A Geographical Survey of Africa by James McQueen published 1840. From part one of this response video, we saw the letter of intent from the slave hunters designed to frame the freedom-seeking Negroes in Biafra. And please remember that the reason they are able to do all that and succeed in them is because they are working very closely with their slave hunting partners, mainly the Europeans and the Americans. You don't need to believe us, they will expose themselves in a short time to come. We also saw that colonial boundaries of one Nigeria or one Cameroon are actually the slave trade dressed in borrowed robes today. Have you then taken time to try to understand how the slave trade happened? How the slaves, that is the Negroes, lived in bondage and why they did not rise up for freedom? And how the slave master and his slave hunting partners react to any quest for freedom? And at least compare it with what you're seeing in Biafra and in Ambazonia today. Remember, if we were to write to you a letter now saying, we want you to give us back our car, you're going to laugh it off because you know you don't have our car. But now, if you noticed, the moment the people in Biafra or in Ambazonia asked for freedom, they were attacked. Our question to you is, why do you think they were attacked if there was nothing there? From the slave trade to colonialism, the slave trade is simply when it is individual. Remember at that time, they will come capture the slaves and ship them to the new world and after conditioning and seasoning, they are sent into the plantations to produce food for the slave master. But then, when the slave trade ended in that format, they exported their evil to the Negro's homeland, where they now do that conditioning and seasoning in their own land using their slave hunting partners, after which, through immigration, they are still able to bring them over to come and work for them as slaves. You don't need to believe us, we shall prove it to you and they will soon expose themselves further. And so, ideally, colonialism is when it is corporate, it's just corporate slavery where they map out a particular area and say this belongs to France, this belongs to the British, this belongs to the Dutch, this belongs to the Portuguese, and this belongs to the Germans, and so on and so forth. From there, they will be conditioning and seasoning the slaves for their own interests in the new or old world. And this brings us to the question we had asked earlier, who between the master and the slave did you think needs the other more? Who do you think would go to war to keep the other? And the mere fact that the slave hunters of old, mainly the Fulanese and the Arabs, are willing to go to war with the support of the slave master who were their slave hunting partners, in defense of one Nigeria or one Cameroon, is enough proof that they were the slave hunters at that time 
and the slave master is the one that supports them. This is why you notice that the same way the media in Africa does not report the killings in Biafra and in Amazonia, it's the same way the slave master's media does not. If you notice, little thing in Gaza which Trump was able to stop when he was there and they all ganged up against him. Every newspaper today is carrying the news. Whereas, whatever happens in Biafra and in Ambazonia, they conspired not to report it. Remember, they learned this from the slave trade, so that if people got to know that they were still committing their evils on the Negroes there, a lot of people would condemn it. That's why they make sure they don't report it. You don't need to believe us. At least ask yourself how rockets flying in Israel and uh, Palestine will make headline news all over the world. Whereas, no matter how many people their slave hunting partners kill in Biafra and in Ambazonia and in the middle belt of Nigeria and in southern Nigeria today, none of those media will carry it because they obviously conspired not to. Even if you sent them the news, they will never publish it. If you doubt what we're saying, give it a try. Make an independent investigation and try to send them the news directly. You will see how they will all carefully avoid it. They will never report it. And so the mere fact that the Nigerian government or Cameroonian government which are controlled by the slave master and their slave hunting partners could go to war to keep the Negroes under their bondage is enough proof that the Negroes are still their slaves which we shall continue to elucidate on this channel. But then to our topic of today in this response video recall that in part 1 we looked at a letter written by the state security services in Nigeria which is controlled by the slave hunters mainly the Fulanese and how they alleged that those seeking for freedom were planning to move explosives from one place to another which was ideally how they normally do when they plan terror attacks they will make such pronouncements and then carry out the attacks and their slave hunting partners mainly the British will help them misinform the rest of the world that it was done by the rebels like they did in the past but now they are using secessionists which is the same thing. A simple question you might want to ask is rebelling against who and who made them realize and judges over those people. That's who they are. They work together against the Negroes. But we now got an additional comment we wanted to add to this so that the context can be very clear. To anyone who is following or who has been following our videos remember like we always told you they are still working together against the negroes and you could call them christians and muslims you could call them europeans and arabs whichever one you choose they both produce the same outcome in addition to the comment we were responding to we got this comment from somebody mohammed saleh diallo which we suspect is likely a fulani and this comment says in response to your debate you are actually right religion was used to enslave people or justify amoral acts my problem is your application of this to the entire practitioners of said religion or group now of course everyone is entitled to their beliefs remember this tries to suggest that it is a particular group but not the religion trying to separate the religion from the culprits even when the justification for capturing the Negroes at all was that they were pagans and the religions at that time preached that the Negroes were not human but that they were like beasts akin to cattle and it was actually a religious duty to capture them and send them into slavery in the new or old world including the Middle East and North Africa. Remember the old world was their term for Europe while the new world was the Americas. But then we responded by saying if someone created a religion and shoved it down people's throats with threats of slavery and death, shouldn't we ask why? And the reply was at the Renaissance, yes, that is agreeable, but your speech comes off nationalistic or with some level of bias. Remember, they try to make it look like we are biased against Muslims or we are biased against the Fulanese. But then, we are only reading from what the books were saying and the records. And above all, they are doing the same thing today in Biafra and in Ambazonia. 
So even if you claim we are biased, why not look at what they are doing today to now draw your conclusions from there? But then the individual who we are responding to in our last video replied to say it is pro Biafran. That is the point. Remember, Biafra and Ambazonia today was exactly what abolitionists and Quakers were during the slave trade. So it makes sense that the slave master and his slave hunting partners will all be united against them today. The same way you can see clearly that they are. Remember we mentioned to you the lockdown approach as a solution or a response to the COVID was targeted at that area which we shall look at in a subsequent video. You don't need to believe us. You can call us any names you like. They will expose themselves if you kept your eyes open. But we shall prove it to you in a subsequent video. But we replied the comment on bias saying, if only you can show us where and separate it from where we read from a book. And then to the person we were replying to in our last video and our explanation as to the modus operandi of the slave hunters and how they would issue such accusations when they planned some terror attack which the slave master would help them deceive the world with. And then we replied her saying, what about Ambazonia? Why is the British that gives weapons not shooting Scotland or being shot over Brexit? And as you would expect, the person we replied to Mulangese Wright replied us saying, the renaissance because english and scots are both white remember this clearly shows us that the negroes are not the same with the people killing them so that's why you see that the slave hunters are killing the negroes over biafra and ambazonia because it's the same people doing the same thing to the same people the negroes but then she went on further to say the renaissance white races give support based on proximity to whiteness remember they too claim to be black people some of them claim to be africans but they also support the whites against biafrans and ambazonians they did this during the slave trade they did it during the biafran war of 1967 to 70 which was genocidal and they are still doing it till today now what does that tell all of us and interestingly she also wrote if you look closer to whites, you will tend to get more support. And interestingly, during the slave trade, their slave hunting partners were deceived to believe that they were white people. When we look at who they are really, you would tell us how such persons could be claiming to be white. But you see what this person is saying. And that's exactly how the slave trade happened. And that's why they are still able to use them till tomorrow morning. They tell them that they are white people and the Negroes are black. So they now use them against the Negroes, which you don't need to believe us to see. All you need to do is to look at what they are doing there. Remember, these people making these comments, we are blaming us for being biased. But then the records we are showing that and the atrocities and activities there are proving the case too beyond all reasonable doubts and to better understand the scenario better let us reference the negro and the white man by bishop wj gaines published 1897 and here we are told that the word negro is of latin origin derived from niger which means black it is applied to the races of the african continent and to their descendants in the old and new world and please remember that the old world was europe and the new world refers to the americas and the caribbean and note that the likes of the Nkalawe are mere propagandists they are just recruited to misinform the negroes and this is why you are hearing about the aboriginal narrative today remember the pictures they show you always look out for the woolly hair it is very important because those are some of the criteria that were used during the slave trade to identify the Negroes and their color was also different from the average black African. And it goes further to say the Egyptian, Babas, Abyssinians and Nubians of Northern Africa are not classed as the Negro though there is a strong admixture of Negro blood in most of these. So our interest is to show you that that appellation of African is ambiguous. It doesn't make sense either. 
and this is why you can easily see that the Negroes are also oppressed even in Africa, even in West Africa, even in Ghana. You see that wherever they are, they are oppressed, but you may not know because of the deception of African or how we are all Africans. And it goes further to say, the term Negro is not a national appellation, but is applied generally to about one half of the population of Africa, including the most fertile portion of that continent. And this is perhaps why you notice that wherever they push the Negroes to, they always follow them to the area for one reason or the other. Whether it was palm oil, whether it was coal, whether it is crude oil today, they are always looking for an opportunity to be where the Negroes are. And if you have been following the killings in Nigeria today in West Africa by the Fulanese, you may have also heard that wherever they come to, that place becomes a desert or turns into a desert. Those are statements many people use to describe wherever they come to. All their duty is to bring terror, violence and bloodshed to wherever they are. And that's why the slave master works to make sure that he has them in the same space as the Negroes. If you noticed during the lockdown, you will see that the slave master and his slave hunting partners connived to be shipping a lot of them to the southern part of Nigeria. If you also check, they were planning another lockdown, which a closer look at might try to suggest that based on the lockdowns, in Europe and America, that's why they were doing it. But then, the people are bound to resist it because they have seen what they did in the past. Above all, you have to remember very well that the slave master and his slave hunting partners are working perfectly together. Now that we have a little background about who the Negroes are or were, let us reference a geographical survey of Africa, its rivers, lakes, mountains, productions, states, population, etc. And this was by James McQueen, published 1840. And here we see that the real Negro race and who remain unconquered by the Mohammedan arms and unconverted to the Mohammedan faith were from six to eight centuries ago driven into this portion of Africa where the very high mountains and native forests which run east and west in the parallel of 9 degrees to 10 degrees north latitude have hitherto sheltered them from the incessant attacks of the fanatic Moor and the more fanatic negro mohammedan convert so when we tell you that the mohammedan religion which is today called islam was behind the slave trade you don't need to doubt or believe us you just need to go and research it at least you can see it clearly which is exactly what they are doing that's why you hear from the fulanese speaking the same language as the slave master they will tell you global warming is why they have to move their cattle down south they did the lockdown they moved their mercenaries down south they want to do another lockdown and they want to move their mercenaries down south again that's who they are they work with the slave master and in the event you are wondering why they want to move them to the place where the negroes are the simple reason is they act as enemies within you can't make progress anywhere they are as far as they're in that space you can never make progress so we suspect that the whole goal of the slave master in trying to move them in large numbers into the space is to destroy the area the same way they've destroyed the north that's all they do they are the slave masters slave hunting partners they lack humanity they lack common sense and there is no better way to say it and again we ask you if there was nothing there why is it that when people talk about freedom they are attacked they don't have any gun they don't have any machete they don't have any sticks all they say is we want freedom and they are murdered and the slave master looks the other way ask yourself that simple question if you notice they are going secretly and abducting people and killing over it which was exactly the same thing the slave master did during the slave trade if you looked at the americas if a negro asked for freedom at that time he will be hung publicly which is the same thing you see them do today when they kill somebody they will display him and show you that he's a terrorist and it goes further here to say the contiguity also of these negro states with the atlantic from which they have been abundantly supplied for 250 years with powder and firearms by their trade with europeans has enabled them even more than their natural barriers and defenses to oppose the restless moors 
who are only enabled to obtain such supplies of the munitions of war to a limited degree by the caravans across the great desert from the shores of the Mediterranean. To this cause, chiefly is it owing that this portion of Africa has hitherto escaped from the Mohammedan faith and from the Mohammedan yoke. A circumstance in one point to be regretted because wherever that faith and that yoke have been introduced, an end has been put to all those groveling superstitions and human massacres and human sacrifices to which we have alluded. Remember this book was being written in 1840 at which point they have started coming with colonialism so they needed justifications for it. What the missionaries actually came there to do was since Islam did not get to this area, let's go and plant Christianity and afterwards Islamize them. You may notice that the Muslims in West and Central Africa today are being sponsored and supported by the slave masters, mainly the Europeans and of course the Arabs. And if you looked at the Nigerian academic curriculum, you will see that they have tinkered it to align with the Islamic plan, which is something they wrote down somewhere. We can look at it in a subsequent video. But our interest is to show you that their plan of Islamization, their jihad, is still sponsored by the Europeans. So if the religions were actually true, that is Christianity and Islam, why would they be behind the slave trade, be behind the genocide in Biafra, be behind the massacres going on there today, if they were genuinely true? Above all, if they were true, you won't need to be preached, you won't need to be forced into any of them. You would have been allowed of your own free will, which is exactly what the truth of the way of the Negroes was before the coming of these two golden calves of Islam and Christianity. And as regards the accusation of bias, which the person that made the comment tried to suggest, perhaps about Islam, this whole thing clarifies it. But then, if it is about the Fulanese, let us reference the missionary history of Sierra Leone by the Reverend Henry Siddell, and this was published 1874. And here we see that the inhabitants of Sierra Leone were divided into two great classes, the colonists and liberated slaves. And in the colonists were these groups, which were the settlers, the maroons, the Fulas and Mandingos, the Krumans, and the Europeans. They were the colonists. Remember, they were certainly the slave hunting partners to the Europeans and Arabs. That's why you see that they are different from the liberated slaves. But we go a little further so you understand how the slave master operates. Everything happening there, he's the one behind them. And the only problem is that his slave hunting partners, they lack humanity and they lack common sense. And the armies you see there, where the slave hunters and that's why you notice that when people talk about freedom they will go and kill them as against those that are bombing innocent people so the Boko Haram you hear the Fulani headsmen that you hear about their killings are not terrorist groups those that are terrorists are those who ask for freedom that's all they didn't do anything they didn't fight anybody they didn't throw any stone they just said we want out of this union because they are still slaves there that's what you see and that's why the slave master is supporting and defending them so if you doubt what we're saying conduct your research and follow what is happening there it's very simple to see and going further down here it tells us that the settlers are the descendants of the free blacks who before the outbreak of the american war of the last century had been the proprietors of cultivated land in the southern states of america throughout the whole of the contest between the states and england these blacks remained loyal to the later country that's they remained loyal to england remember england was the biggest slave trading country in the world at that time so that's why you see that in nigeria they speak english and that is where the bulk of the slaves came from just look at Biafra and Ambazonia and you see that Ambazonia is the English speaking part of Cameroon and a closer look you will see the British High Commissioner running all over the place and they are the ones controlling the armies you see and using them to kill people the BBC is also there doing the same thing now a little question to you is why do you think they are doing that if they were not working together don't you think that the British High Commissioner for example the Americans could have at least called their foot soldiers to order. 
in one way or another but instead they support them fully they provide them with weapons and they use their media to misinform the rest of the world and just before we move forward we see that maroons the word maroon is supposed to be a corruption of a Spanish word signifying marauder or plunderer. Remember, if you looked at Den Calloway, for example, you will see that he's a maroon. He's not even a Negro per se, but a maroon. Some, however, think that it is merely a mispronunciation of the word more, whom the maroons resemble in complexion. They had their origin in Jamaica from an intermixture of several white and black races when during the early connection of the Spaniards with that island, runaway slaves not unfrequently secured their liberty in the impenetrable forests. The Maroon is by descent European, American and African and he combines in his person the vices with very few of the virtues of these three races. So that's why you see the Nkalowe will leave all the sufferings of the Negroes and he's talking about how they are indigenous when that doesn't in any way free them from the bondage they are in and you can see how biden made a law for the asians did not make any for the negroes that's the same thing we were talking about imagine if it was trump that made this they would have shouted the heavens down telling you how racist he is whereas that was the best man for the negroes after abraham lincoln it doesn't matter how you think about what we just said we can prove it with facts and then this new regime will prove it further for you because since this regime came in do you not see that their slave hunting partners are now emboldened because they know that their slave hunting partners are now back on the saddle in the new world or the americas as you might wish to call them to the fulanese we see here that the fullers that's the fulanese arrests attention by his strong arab and occasionally roman features the long ringlets that hang down to his shoulders his thoughtful eye his measured step and his rosary of beads generally carried in his hand you cannot mistake him he is a disciple of the prophet of maker he is the gold merchant of the coast and he is more than suspected of being a slave merchant too because that's what they do and that's why you see that the sultan of sokoto who has no job drives a rolls royce because that's who they are and it goes further to say it is important to bear in mind that the proper fullers are not of the negro race nor are they the original inhabitants of the countries in which they live their features are european their hair is straight and silky and their skin of a tawny hue inclining to copper these proper fullers are however less numerous than the black fullers who have sprung from the intermarriages of this tawny race with the negroes so if the fullers and the negroes are not the same where is the Nkalowe getting his concept of how negroes are now indians from that's because that's the propaganda the slave master has commissioned him to sell for him that's all he's doing you don't need to believe us you just need to go and read let us also reference a tropical dependency an outline of the ancient history of the western sudan with an account of the modern settlement of northern nigeria by flora elshaw lady lugard and this was published 1905 and here we see that it is also in this neighborhood about the sources of the senegal that the original home in africa of the fulani who counts as a partly white race is placed so our interest is where it says count as a partly white race so you understand where their synergy is coming from and it also goes further here to say the fulani who counted themselves a white race were constantly subject to black rulers and it is related of the black women of one of the kingdoms of the sudan that then their monarch was overthrown by a contemporary Baba king. They too proud to allow themselves to fall into the hands of white men preferred to commit suicide. Remember the slave master knows how to incite them. The author of this book was a white woman, a British woman whose husband was behind the amalgamation of the north and south in Nigeria. If you notice from these two places we read, in the first one, it said they counted as a partly white race 
in this one he says they counted themselves a white race you see the difference here she said they counted themselves but then he said they counted as a partly white race but here now they count themselves as they are entirely two different things but we leave that apart for now when we look at what they look like we shall ask you one question and that question will be how somebody like that could consider himself or herself a white person and to get the right context and how the slave master incites them which is where all the problems you are seeing in the sub-region is coming from you see that before where we read it says the founder and first governor of this town was black it seems contrary to modern ideas that white people should under any circumstances consent to be ruled by blacks but it will be seen that in the history of the western sudan this objection was not universally felt so you see why everywhere the flannies are they want to be the one ruling it doesn't matter if they know what is going on there or not so they come to your land and they want to rule you that's all they think about that's why you notice that when the slave master pays visits to whoever they consider ruling anywhere, they normally visit the Fulanese. In the next few years, you will see that the Fulanese they shipped to the south during the lockdown will become Sarikin Fulani somewhere in the south and you will see the slave master will start visiting them because they are still working together. You don't need to believe us, you just need to read these old records and see what they are doing today. So ideally, all the slave master does is to incite them make them believe they are somehow superior and then use them against the negroes you can see they are around huts everywhere that's all they come with terror violence and bloodshed then it used to be slave raids or razia in islamic terms but today they come in and then the army and police the armed forces will provide them with cover but they bring in all their people from all over the places to come and be killing people and the slave master will look the other way and before we come back to this particular book, let us reference A History of Colonization on the Western Coast of Africa by Archibald Alexander. This was published 1846 and here we see that the Felatas, that's the Fulanese, are so denominated by the Negroes, but the name by which they call themselves is Felan, which might be more correctly written Fula, according to the sound of the syllables. The origin of the term Felathas is not known, but as they are anthropoclets like the Tuaregs and still Negroes to make slaves of them, it is probably an appellation of reproach like that of Sego given to these later. So now you understand why the slave master is always pushing them to be in the same space with the Negroes so that he can be using them 